And we're back to learning GIMP and this time I'm going to show you the basics of using the pen tool. It's also called the path tool in GIMP, but you may have seen it as the pen tool. For example in Inkscape, Illustrator, maybe Photoshop. We select it, we've got three modes, design, edit and move. Let's go over this. I've got a simple black background and an empty layer on top that I've called shape. And you can left click and if you want to close your shape, you can hold control, it switches to edit. Your icon will change a little bit, then go to the starting point, left click. Now it's closed, right click, select from path. And now we can fill it, for example, with a paint bucket tool in white. Let us go over this again, but this time I left click, then I left click and drag. And this is how you can create curves. So it gives you these handles, which are meant to adjust the angle. And you can also click here after you've closed it, selection from path. And again, I'll use the paint bucket tool. I go to select a none or press shift control A to deselect. And then let's create another one. I close it and now I hover over these lines and I can drag them and it will be curved automatically. And you've got these handles to adjust the angle. If you want to switch to a different node, just left click on it and you will see the handles of that specific node. Let's click on fill path and you can directly fill it right here with the foreground color. In my case, it's white. Let me create a new layer. So this one's already full. I'll make my first one invisible. Let us create another shape. It's not closed and now I switch to edit. And I can edit these nodes directly. So if you left click on them, you will get your handles and you can drag them around. If you switch to the move mode, you can move this entire shape around. Then go back to design, click on the last node, and then you can continue with your path. Hold control and close the shape with a left click. Let us stroke it this time. Once again, it's my foreground color white. I'll make it red. I've got a line width of 20 and I'll just confirm. And these are the basics. Be aware that once you've closed your shape and then you use the path to again, you're going to create a totally new shape. So it's a good idea to play around with Ctrl Z if you want to undo stuff and then keep continue working on your initial shape. Let me show you a real life example. So I've got this flower right here and I use the paths tool and I go over the outline. Well, let me first create a new layer. I'll call it flower, it's transparent. I'll simply go over it with a left click and I don't worry too much about the curves for now. When I've arrived at the end, I hold control to switch to the edit mode and this allows me to close this shape. Now I hover over these lines and I adjust the curve. You can drag around these nodes. And if you want to add a new node, so one of these anchor points, maybe here is a good place to do that. I just hold control and then I left click. So now I've added a new anchor point. It already has handles. I'm not going to go over all of these details. Obviously, the more time you put in, the better results will look. But this is just 
to show you what the path tool can do. So I'm not going to waste too much time repeating it all. As I've said, just rearrange these nodes, hover over the lines, give them curves, adjust the handles. And when you think you've got what you need, just click on selection from path. And let me color it using the paint bucket tool. And if I left click on it, this is the shape that we've created now. Keep in mind that it's on this new transparent layer. And maybe I use a bluish color for this example. And now I go to the mode, which is the blending mode. And I use hard light. And now you can adjust the color of this flower. Maybe I'll pick a greenish color. I can still adjust it. If you play around with the opacity right here, you can further adjust it. And you could obviously try the other blending modes as well. Once again, I didn't fix all of the details here. This is just a tutorial, so I didn't want to waste too much time. But it's the basic process of using this path tool on a real life project. I hope this video was helpful, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.